Testing one, two. Hello, hello. Testing one, two. Can you hear me clearly? Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Can you hear me clearly? Testing one, two, three. How did it sound and look? Yes, it did? Okay. All right. So we're live now, so. The microphone is on. Okay. Why it looking so far? What's that? Why it look like it's so far from me? Good afternoon, Cedarfield family. I hope all is well with you on this fine February 3rd at 3 o'clock. March. March, sorry. March 3rd. <laughs> oh, going back in time. Uh, so glad you could all join us today. Those of you that are here at the Community Live, uh, thank you for taking time out. And if you are one that's viewing this video tonight, thank you for taking time away from your profession and or uh, your family to listen to some information about Cedarfield. We do have an action-packed live chat today. Uh, the format is follow as follows. Uh, Trish has a, a little announcement about our chaplain interns. Uh, we do have some COVID-19 uh, information to share, both about the vaccine, about testing, and some of our preparedness plans. Uh, we have an operational update um, from the administration office. We have some operational updates from housekeeping um, and dining services. And at the end of this live chat, we will share some spiritual well-being again from Trish. Trish will come back and um, cross the finish line here with the live chat. So. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Trish Carter, our chaplain manager. Good afternoon, Cedarfield. We are so excited to have not one, but two chaplain interns. We have one with us here today, Victor Darwin, who was born in India but lived for 10 years in Ireland serving as a pastor. 
He has a wife who is a nurse, two daughters, ages nine and eleven, and his goal is to be a chaplain. He will first be working in Sunshine Plaza and assisted living, but then will also go up to work in health care. Hello, everyone. Take off your mask so they can see. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure. Thank you, Trish. Uh, in terms of our COVID-19 Cedarfield situation, it's very easy to summarize at this point. Our dashboard is green for every department and every neighborhood of where team members work. And the dashboard is also green for every resident, whether the resident lives in the north neighborhood, south neighborhood, or central neighborhood, whether they live in assisted living or the memory support neighborhood, whether residents live in the main building or the cottages, the dashboard is completely green at this point. Our COVID-19 uh, vaccine distribution, we have our final, our fifth, our sixth clinic, our final clinic here on Friday. It is the second vaccine round for those uh, participants that received their first dose on February 12th. Uh, that clinic is from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Friday, right here in the Fellowship Hall. There are 37 people uh, that should be in attendance uh, for that particular clinic. It is a second dose only clinic. And uh, after that, clinic concludes next week during our live chat I will be sure to uh, review uh, in summary um, the uh, the participation rate with the vaccine for residents team members uh, and our uh, vendors and or partners that have uh, come along and received it as well our COVID-19 preparedness plan uh, this week was the first week where we rolled out dining services. David's going to talk a little bit more about dining services. Uh, visitation last week went very well. Uh, thank you to all the families that are listening, the residents, uh, for taking our uh, rules, so to speak, uh, seriously around visitation uh, Thursday, Friday, more importantly, Saturday and Sunday just went, uh, went, just went great. And so we will continue to uh, operate visitation and dining services here uh, the way that that memo was described last week that we distributed for the next month. Uh, on Monday of this coming week, uh, there are seven of us that are a part of the COVID-19 Evolving Preparedness Plan team along with two members of our resident uh, advisory council, uh, Mr. Rutger and Mr. Greenwood, are joining us to review the uh, preparedness plan uh, in its entirety and to review if there's any latest CDC or VDH guidance. Um, to all uh, nine of us will be coming together to look at that guidance and look at our current preparedness plan um, and review what makes sense for Cedar Field. Um, and then probably later half of the week, next week, Wednesday or Thursday, we will distribute that plan to everybody to keep everybody on the same page about what services and amenities um, are, are uh, being folded back into our, our community uh, and or any other restrictions that we would be lifting um, in a very conservative uh, approach so that we're comporting with at least the guidance that we have thus far. Uh, the COVID-19 testing clinics uh, started today and we 
tested 67 people, uh, 55 residents and 12 staff. I'm happy to report that all 67 of them were negative. So that's just great. We do have four other testing clinics uh, throughout the month of uh, March. I don't know why I keep wanting to say February. Throughout the rest of the uh, month of March, we have four additional clinics on Wednesdays. I would refer to your memo that we posted last week. Uh, we're doing it in alphabetical order. Um, and so, but this week's clinic uh, just went great. Um, some operational updates. I'm going to first start off with some great news, um, and it has to do with our Cedar Field mentors. Um, in addition to the article that many of you uh, had the chance to read from the Richmond Times Dispatch uh, regarding the Cedarfield uh, readers, mentors, um, and in the, the Richmond Times Dispatch congratulated them, they have also been congratulated in two other ways recently. Uh, first, St. Catherine's School, of which the four members of the uh, Cedarfield mentors are, are graduates of are mentioned um, through uh, the Founders Day over there at St. Catherine School. And then secondly, the Virginia uh, delegate Rodney Willett um, sent Barbara Fiske uh, a beautiful congratulatory letter uh, to the Cedarfield residents regarding our program. Um, I have a copy of that letter in the administration suite if anybody wishes to uh, come down and receive a copy of it. It's just a beautiful, uh, well-written letter uh, thanking the Cedarfield mentors uh, for what they have done over at uh, Fair Oaks Elementary School. So uh, if anybody would like, again, a copy of that, please come on down. Um, Charlotte Bailey uh, and, um, oh, just throwing a blank. Martha Cole Glenn, sorry Martha. Um, they changed the name from Cedarfield Readers to Cedarfield Mentors because they are expanding. It's not just a readers club. Um, they're expanding to a pen pal writing program with, Fair, with the Fair Oaks children um, this coming Friday. And in a very near future, they hope to initiate art education program as well. So between um, reading, between pen palling, and between the art education. If you have an interest in any one of those three areas to connect with children, um, Martha and um, uh, Charlotte would love to talk with you. Uh, currently, there are about 40 residents and team members that are volunteering their time to connect with this particular school. Um, and again, thank you to Katrin. Uh, the team at Cedarfield team member who has been really instrumental working with uh, Martha Cole Glenn and Charlotte Bailey uh, and really uh, providing the, the uh, a lot of the logistics behind the scenes here. So uh, congratulations and uh, look forward to the, the program growing. That's just great. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Sharon Brown, our housekeeping director, who has some updates. Good evening. Well, I have just one announcement for today. Uh, we have already started the Spring Fling additional cleaning service for, the, for spring season. The additional cleaning service can be performed with no further cost. You don't have to pay anything for these services. These additional services are followed. You can get your comfort wash, appliance pull out to clean behind, your oven clean, your blind wash, your refrigerator clean, and your mattress turn. Also, if you'd like your windows to be washed, please call Gloria at 474-8806 and place a work order. And the month of March will be the cottage for the spring fling service. And then when April, May, and June will be the month of spring clean for the independent building. You will receive a flyer in your in-house mailbox informing you when your cleaning service will begin. 
If you have any questions, please give me a call or call the housekeeping department. Thank you. If you have any questions, please call me. I'll give it you over today. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm David Stewart here representing the dining department. And I'm very happy to be with you today uh, for some updates on the dining operations. Um, the biggest uh, thing we have going on right now in dining is that we are reopened. Yay. I know everybody's happy about that, including the service team. Um, but there's some uh, slight changes to the operations right now. Uh, first and foremost, we have a uh, new phase of construction that has begun in assisted living. And so our assisted living residents are dining uh, in Cedar Grill. You, know, you may have noticed that the, uh, the side of the Cedar Grill closest to the healthcare center being uh, used by the assisted living residents. And so we've set some uh, space aside for them. And um, secondarily, as you may have heard uh, from, from me or other people, that uh, as the years uh, progressed, we have had some team members leave. We've had some, uh, a couple individuals go back to school, uh, a couple, uh, one individual went back to their country. Uh, so we've had about seven team members leave us in the last month or two, and that has tightened things up on our schedule quite a bit. And so with respect to reservations for independent living residents, right now with assisted living in the dining room, our assisted living uh, family members in the dining room and our uh, dining team member staffing, uh, we are taking less reservations, fewer reservations right now. Uh, we hope we can uh, get that back to where we were. Uh, earlier in the year when we were able to take 90 to 100 reservations in a day, pretty much everybody that wanted to come could. Right now we're closer to 60 to 70 reservations, and so the hostesses are really struggling to figure out how to get everybody in. Um, it's a very difficult process for the hostesses because if we have a couple, we can seat them together, of course. Um, many residents want to seat near their friends, so the hostesses are trying to work that out geographically as well. Um, so they have that as a challenge. As you also know, we are giving everybody an opportunity to come at least once a week to the dining room, so they're giving those individuals priority on the reservations list. And then for those who call um, the, the day of, we're keeping track of those individuals and trying to squeeze them in too. This week has been difficult. We've had a few um, instances where we had to tell people we didn't have space, and that's kind of a first. So I've gotten a few phone calls from people saying, you know, what do you mean I can't get in? Um, and for right now and for the next uh, little while, that's probably going to be the case. So the hostesses are really working hard to. Um, balance the dining room, keep the spacing where it should be, honor requests from people where they want to sit, whether it be up by a window or near friends. Um, so they're working really hard to do that. And uh, please understand that they're trying to make it fair for everybody, they're trying to get everybody who wants to come in and as many times in a week as they can. But we don't want to have one individual get in once a week and somebody else get in five times a week. So they're, please understand that and they are really working hard at that process. Um, also, once you are seated, if you would, please don't reseat yourself. Um, we've had instances of that, and that really um, throws a wrench into the work for the service team. So uh, um, if you have any questions, please reach out to us, and we'll be glad to answer them. Um, this is a little bit of a new twist, and we understand that, so I'm glad I had that opportunity to be here with you today. Um, best wishes from the dining team, and let's uh, hope we can get back to normal soon. Appreciate the time. Thank you, David. I do have a note here that the uh, Rodney Willett letter that I referenced in the beginning of this live chat is also posted on the resident bull uh, bulletin board uh, straight down the hallway here. So if anybody uh, would like to read it on the bulletin board or come down and get a copy of it, uh, please feel free uh, to do so. 
In turn, a couple other uh, administrative updates. Um, I, I'll start first with a, a memo that is in the resident cubby boxes and or cottage mailboxes at this point. If you have not had a chance uh, to retrieve it, uh, I would encourage you to please get down to your um, respected mailbox or cubby box over the next 24 hours. Uh, it's a really important memo. Uh, it has has to do related to milling and repaving a very large section of uh, the Cedarfield blacktop. Mainly uh, the Cedarfield lane and all of the cul-de-sacs in the lane um, as well as all of the parking on the east side of the main building which stretches from D-Wing all the way around to the Parkview entrance. So Jack Johnson and I had a, a series of meetings with um, our contractor, uh, which is A1 Asphalt Paving. Uh, we feel very comfortable with this organization, met a couple of times over the logistics of this plan. And as you can imagine, remilling uh, that much blacktop, um, there are a significant number of logistics. So. This memo is meant to summarize what we feel is the easiest way to go through what is a nine day project uh, on this particular phase. This is phase two of four uh, when it comes to milling, repaving, repairing uh, all the blacktop around our community. And so uh, Renee, Jack and I have tried to summarize uh, again, the logistics and make it as easy as we can on the residents. Um, uh, one of the most frequently asked questions thus far that have come into residence since we issued this memo uh, earlier this morning, for those of you that have a covered parking space near the main building, this does apply to you as well. Uh, your car sits on top of blacktop and all of that blacktop will be uh, replaced. And if anyone has any questions about uh, the memo, please feel free to reach out to Jack Johnson uh, uh, or I, and we will um, work through any and all of your questions over the next week. Um, we'll make reference to this memo again during the live chat uh, next week. If any families are listening tonight, um, please feel free to, again, call the administration suite and we'll answer uh, any and all of your questions. Uh, just a couple of things that have popped up, a couple of things that have popped up um, related to parking around Cedarfield. Just thought I'd take the chance to address um, three or four main items related to parking. Uh, number one, and these are in no particular order, um, but the front of the main building is really, we're really trying to reserve the front of the main building for um, guests and visitors that come in throughout the day in the early evening. And so uh, we, through this repaving project and when we're, we're finished with it on March 23rd, we're really gonna make a firm stand that um, any cars that are out in front of the main building um, uh, on a permanent basis that we help that resident relocate uh, their cars to designated uh, spots around the community. Secondly, has to do with handicapped spaces. Uh, every, really many people at, at a, a community of this nature could apply for a handicapped parking space uh, tag. Uh, we do have obviously handicapped spaces around the community uh, for that intended purpose. Uh, since I've been in this business for 23 years uh, at the communities I've had the pleasure of leading and here at Cedarfield, I really sh feel strongly that those handicapped spaces, we should all be good neighbors and utilize those spaces for uh, temporary uses, uh, parking in them, unloading the car, bringing in your groceries, and then parking into a another spot. Since the majority of people who live here could actually park in that particular spot. So my, my plea to everybody is that we consider those parking spaces temporary spaces for that purpose. So 
Uh, legally, I can't mandate that. Um, so I am making a plea that we're all maybe elevate our good neighbor nature uh, with those parking spaces and use them for temporary spaces. And then um, a, a little bit of a sensitive topic related to parking. Um, see, we have, uh, in conjunction with working with a, a, a significant number of residents, have come to realize that um, many, not many, there are some residents who use their car uh, who might not even be driving anymore, but leave their car here at Cedarfield um, for when the family, the children come into town so they can use that car uh, instead of renting one. And or there is covered parking spaces where there's not a car in that space, but we pay for that space again so that when children come into the, from out of town that they have a, a, a place to park. In those particular two practices, uh, we're going to really work hard with uh, the residents in eliminating those practices so that we can free up parking spaces for the intended use of residents who live here, team members who work here, and guests who visit on a, on a frequent basis. So if anybody has any questions about this particular paving memo, again, please feel free uh, to call Jack Johnson or uh, call down to the administration suite and we'll answer any and all of your questions just as soon as we can. Uh, in terms of the household project, last week I did mention that we received our temporary certificate of occupancy and that's just one step closer to being able to occupy that space. Uh, when February, I'm sorry, why do we keep saying February? March 12th rolls around next Friday. Uh, we are anticipating to get our certificate of occupancy and uh, then that building will be officially ours. So we, all that to say is we are on track to have a series of grand openings during the week of April 12th um, to have a chance for all the residents and the team members to see this beautiful space. So please mark your calendar for that week. We will be coming out with a, uh, a memo here shortly, probably next week, which will outline what that grand opening week looks like to give folks a little bit more uh, definition to it. Last time we had a live chat, I had mentioned uh, about bird feeders around the community. We are still, um, there's many passionate emails and letters that have come into the administration suite about trying to find a balance and so I have uh, a meeting scheduled here in the beginning of next week with a couple of residents to review what we should do to balance, um, uh, balance the, uh, that, that particular topic. So look forward to something coming out next week about our uh, approach. And then lastly for me is a, a big, big thank you to Carol Marco. She has been our president for the last year, and her service and dedication has just been really unbelievable. I have had the pleasure of meeting with Carol every week on a Tuesday at almost at 3.30 through this uh, entire global pandemic. And, you know, every resident advisory council and, the, and every president experiences some unique challenges throughout their term um, and certainly Carol's was no different in this last year. We changed every rule at Cedarfield. We changed every protocol. We reinvented a retirement community right before our eyes. We changed every procedure you can possibly imagine and Carol was right there helping field calls from residents. Now, what did Michael say on that live chat? And what did he mean by that? Or when we posted memos or our plans, Carol was still there every day and night, answering calls, meeting with residents, providing color around what that memo or that live chat meant. Um, when I think of the Resident Advisory Council and when I think of the the president specifically, I think of a couple of things. I think of the president promoting the, the general well-being of the community. I think of 
uh, how the president's role is to maintain a very close relationship with the residents at large, with helping management understand uh, the needs and desires of the residents, helping residents understand the problems and the challenges that are presented to management and, and why or why not we're uh, lifting up certain uh, resident requests and then responsibly representing really the, the resident community uh, to management as a whole as opposed to maybe just some you know real isolated uh, individual request and so Carol has just done an amazing job through this global pandemic, uh, working with us and listening to the residents. And I just want to, if everybody in their apartment can give her a, a rounding, uh, stand, standing uh, uh, round of applause. And, uh, and if you see her, Carol in the hallway in the next uh, couple of days, if you could just give her a, an elbow and a, and a hearty thank you. She worked tirelessly on your behalf of understanding what we were trying to do uh, so that she could communicate effectively to people about the rationale. So thank you, Carol, for your service in the last 12 months. We appreciate you. OK, I'm going to go over a couple of more frequently asked questions. Looks like there's just one other that has come into, into uh, Renee's text will the potholes near the gatehouse be filled and the answer is yes when this particular company comes on site on March 15th one of the things that they're going to do on that Monday is to fill those uh, the potholes all the way up and down uh, Cedarfield Parkway the parkway is phase four of that particular uh, milling repaving striping project uh, which will happen uh, towards the summertime, uh, middle of the summertime, once we complete phase three, which is in and around the new household building, they will uh, commence phase four and work their way out of the community, which includes the parkway. So that the parkway is a summertime uh, project, but in the meantime, they have committed to uh, filling those potholes uh, next week or two weeks. So any other questions? Renee, do you have any questions? Eddie, do you have any questions? I hope this technology is working for everybody. We have new technology uh, that we're using right now, um, including this microphone attached to a tablet, and this tablet goes right into the, uh, the Touchtown software that we use. So hopefully people have seen a difference in the quality of the picture and the quality of the audio, and um, so good, thank you, Eddie, for learning the ropes here with uh, our, our contractor to help make this technology a reality. Uh, this technology is gonna enable us to do uh, programming, quite honestly, from uh, any, any spot around, uh, around the Cedarfield property. So, and then we will continue to use the technology that we've always had here in the Fellowship Hall with that camera, because uh, that camera is required within a very large space that we have here. So I see no other questions coming in. Been a quick 30 minute live chat. If anyone has any other additional questions, uh, please feel free to uh, call down to the administration suite and we will answer any and all of your questions just as soon as we can. I hope you all have a great Wednesday evening and a a great rest of the week, and we'll talk with you soon. Thank you.